it's very ironic that Deborah asked me to talk about courage because I'm a scaredy cat. I'm a white knuckle driver. I'm scared of the dark. I get very anxious in unfamiliar settings. I think a truly courageous person is someone who preaches every week. I had anxiety for months about getting up in front of a room full of people who mostly I don't know and talk about courage which I don't have. But I think I'm not the only one who lacks courage. Be not afraid or fear not is in the Bible 365 times. So it's a daily reminder. Since courage is such a nebulous concept for me, I look to an expert for help. Brene Brown has studied courage, vulnerability, shame, and empathy for two, two decades. She says that vulnerability is one of the pillars of courage, along with clarity of values, trust, and resilience. Vulnerability is uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. When you are vulnerable, you set aside all pretense and all the facades that your ego wants to shore up. You are your most true self. You expose yourself emotionally. And that takes real, real courage. Brene Brown says you can't get to courage without going through vulnerability. I don't think you can get to courage without the capacity of dealing with risk, uncertainty, and emotional exposure. I've just never done anything that was worthwhile without being scared to death to do it. Or as John Wayne says, courage is being scared to death but sadly not anyway. If you are willing to be vulnerable, it will lead you to be open to the movement of the spirit. It's a situation where you must put aside your ego and experience uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure and allow the divine to take over. Recently, I read an interview of Reverend David Sparks, who is the chaplain of, at Dover Air Force Base. He has presided at the reception of the body of fallen soldiers for over 20 years. He recently presided at the dignified transfers of 13 fallen soldiers who were killed in our, the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. The ceremonies are solemn, quiet rituals. The interviewer asked, what do you say to the families? Have you said the right thing? And he replied, I'm aware that there are times that the words that have come up out of me were not my own. They were someone else's, someone with a capital S. I heard the words for the first time when they came around and entered my ear. Those are very holy moments for me. I've had the great fortune of being able to advocate for injection safety by telling my cancer story. Before I took the podium, I would always say, please God, let your words be my words. And there were times when the words that came out of my mouth were not the words that I had prepared. And those were times of great mystery and awe and wonder for me. Cancer makes me vulnerable. Uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure is my way of life now. I'm trying to adopt Philippians 1.20 as my mantra. I eagerly expect and hope 
that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. My cancer story started 20 years ago with breast cancer. The radiation to treat the breast cancer caused a very slow growing sarcoma in my right brachial plexus. Three years ago, I had my brachial plexus and arm amputated in an effort to cure the cancer. And I had two good years of remission. The cancer came back a year ago. I had six months of chemotherapy, which gave me six months of remission. But now there's a new tumor in my lung, and I'm in treatment once again. We haven't given up hope. And I'm adopting Psalm 27 as my own. I believe I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. But as is my nature, I'm a scary cat. So I'm afraid. I'm afraid of side effects. I'm afraid of loss of quality of life. I'm afraid of dying. The challenge is to face all of this with courage. Being courageous for me means accepting this cancer journey graciously. Not running away from it, not denying it, or ignoring it, or wishing it was different but also not to be overwhelmed by it, not to allow it to steal from me what I have right now, to give it its due, but not let either the hope of better times or the sorrow over the loss of this life to steal from me the joy of right now, this moment, being here with you, with so many good people. We all have scared again at times, regardless of cancer status. We all have struggles. As the Buddhists say, life is suffering. You may not have cancer, but whatever your can whatever your struggle is, today is a day to honor it, to give it its due, to, to decide how you're going to settle. It takes courage to live in this world in such a way that Christ will be exalted. As Brene Brown says, choose courage over comfort because you can't help both. Owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing that we